Hi, I'm Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from CraftSanity.com and today I'm going to continue to give you some ideas of what you can do to make loopers to weave on these Craft Sanity pot holder looms. Recently we did a video where we showed you how to cut up old t-shirts and make loopers and this is really fun when you have a lot of colorful shirts that you don't, they're stretched out or you just, they're just, you know, they're past their prime. But the problem comes in though when you have like a shirt like this that's kind of a little kind of gross and discolored and you want to um, figure out something else to do with it. What we're going to do today is throw those in a dye pot and it's kind of cool because there's a lot of there are a lot of dyes available in the commercial uh, market there in, the, in your local craft store and also um, some big box uh, stores. Uh, I know our local Meyer carries some of these products. I've worked with the Tulip brand before. This will be my first experience with this kind of dye but they all work pretty much the same and I try to do these pretty fast and loose like just throw in the salt throw in the dye um, I do I did heat up the the water on the stove you want to be careful if you're gonna do this with kids usually what I do is I heat up the the water get it out to where it's gonna be and then bring the kids into the mix you're not tripping and scalding your child and then the looper fun just goes out the door because now you're in the emergency room so we want to try to avoid that part uh, so what we're going to do today is just dump these things in. We're going to use five colors. Uh, we're going to dye t-shirts. Um, I'm also going to be dyeing some tea towel fabric and just um, just basically any kind of neutral colored stuff I could find that I wanted to uh, just kind of throw in here. So they do say on the package that you should use rubber gloves. Um, I do most of the time, but not always. So far, nothing terrible has happened, but uh, it is good, it's, especially if you're working with kids. Uh, dress them in clothes that are, you know, you're okay with them getting ruined um, and put on some rubber gloves. So, all right, let's get started with this. I'm going to just open these. I've already added the salt and I think some of these can just open. And this is supposed to be an aqua, which is one of my favorite colors. And we're going to do uh, some yellow as well. And this is flamingo pink, which seems interesting because I saw some flamingos at the Toledo Zoo recently and they were actually like orange. So this whole flamingo pink stuff, I know they're pink flamingos, but I didn't get to see those. And this red is probably going to be trouble because red, you know what happens with red, it usually washes out a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. Well, this is a goldfish orange. This Dylon brand, I like the names of their dyes. I do like that. It's very, very fun. All right, now I'm going to mix these up and I'm going to kind of let that dissolve a little bit. You can dip from one to the other and I'm not going to lie, I've done that before. <laughs> but I'm like a reckless crafter sometimes and I, I didn't realize that until I started doing these videos and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't always follow all the steps. Um, but the thing is though, if you're going between colors, especially like a blue to a yellow, you're going to have green and you don't want to do that. So just take the time to just wipe off your, your stirring utensil and uh, give yourself a chance to keep those colors pretty true. Uh, another thing I want to mention too, I like to make a lot of soup. I would never make soup in these pots because these are the pots I use for dyeing. I also make, um, I do some soap projects, but I would never make food and anything that I have used um, to, use, I, that I've used any kind of chemical dye Keep it, keep it safe and use, use something, buy a, a cheap set of pots from just, uh, you know, you can go to like, um, I think I went to, I don't remember where exactly I got these. You can go to Goodwill, you can go to um, a thrift store, you could go to just any place that sells like really low budget set of pots and get those. I'm going to let this dissolve for a, for a little bit and um, probably stir it again. And then we're going to throw stuff in and get, get set with the dyeing. Okay, we've let the dye dissolve in these pots and now we're gonna get started adding some fabric. Now, um, the first thing you put in is going to absorb the most vibrant color. So um, usually, you know, just 
throw in whatever you want to be the darkest. I don't really care. I just have a pile of old shirts that I'm going to throw in here. And then I'm going to get some lighter gradations with some of the scrap fabric behind me here. So we're just going to start throwing some things in. And you can use your, you can kind of push it down. And you can see like some of it, I mean, it soaks it up right away. And actually, you know, what I've done in the past is I've actually soaked the fabric in the past and I'm going to do that with these little scraps behind me but these I'm just going to throw in and see we'll just throw them in and see what happens yeah I take a lot of photography have your camera nearby because I love to take pictures of this process it's kind of fun oh wow look at this red now we'll see how much of that washes out but that is like a nice red how much can you expect to wash out just generally? It really generally? depends. Um, reds just, reds typically wash out. Um, there's a lot of, I don't know why, but reds tend to, to wash out. But that looks like that's going to be pretty dark. And I like that blue. And I've done things where you can get kind of an ombre if you don't want to have the whole thing be dyed. Or you can dye the whole thing, put the whole thing in and then pull it out so it's, so it's, it's darker at the bottom. But and if you were going to do something like that, you can dip it in and then just kind of clip it to the side. And those kind of things are fun. Okay, what I'm going to notice is as, as I keep adding fabric, things are going to get progressively, they're going to get lighter. So the fabric is going to start absorbing less. Well, it won't be absorbing less. It'll just be there'll be less pigment in the water. See how that wasn't taking all the dye. So I'm gonna kind of push that in. Some white spots on there. So I just get push that down and make sure I'm getting those. And I'm using these are um, this is tea towel fabric from ACS Home and Work. Uh, ACS sponsors my craft sanity podcast and i like to print on this fabric from a printmaking i also like to embroider on it and um, i really like to dye this fabric as well it takes the dye really nicely and if you do this with a group of people it's kind of nice you can assign one person to each color which is really fun because then you can get these things mixed in really fast so um Having a, a little party where you, everyone brings t-shirts and fabric to dye is really fun. I did that with my Weaver's Guild one time and it, th that was really fun. And then you have more pots to work with as well. You don't have to have 20 yourself. You can have everyone bring a couple. And this is definitely an outdoor project. We're doing this on the deck uh, for a reason because if this spills, no problem. Okay, I'm thinking I can get a little bit more in, but I'm going to be getting close to my threshold before I have to move things out. And usually I do two waves. I do, I fill it up and then I um, pull them out, kind of rinse them. I'll show you how I do some rinsing. Hang them up to dry and then I use, I reload the pots again with another round of fabric and that always comes out lighter, but I like it because it's the same color family and these work, they play well together, the colors, because you have uh, just the gradation that happens. And I, I made a quilt recently, the last quilt I made was made with all fabric that I, uh, this tea towel, flower sack tea towel fabric that I had uh, dyed, I wanna say I did it in the fall or in the summer last year, and I kinda had it sitting in a vintage suitcase for a long time and finally had an inspiration to do a project and it was really fun to just work with some solids that I had kind of created myself. And you're probably wondering like, geez, maybe she should have put this up on a table. It looks kind of uncomfortable. I'll admit it. It is a little uncomfortable to be uh, down here uh, stirring this stuff, but um, the reason why I didn't put it up higher is because if there's any kind of accident where you accidentally tip something over. These cannot, these are on the ground, they're on the deck, so the chances of someone getting burned or 
having an accident are reduced. So that's why I do some of these kind of strange moves here. Okay, and I'm thinking I can get, I might really get a couple more pieces in each of those. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse these now and it's raining on my back deck, so I'm gonna do this quickly. And um, actually this is the part you should use, you should, this is the part where I actually do follow the rules and use gloves. Um, all right, so I start with the lightest color first and you squeeze out as much as you can out of it and then I just throw it in here. This is just cold water. And there will be some color that will come out. That one I didn't do a very good job of squeezing out. All the okay, so I'm just getting, giving it some time to uh, and if, you, if I had more time, I sometimes I'll put two uh, clean water, like have one that's the first water bath and then I have another one. But I'm gonna just let this, I'm gonna just gonna dry this. And since it's the latest color, I'm gonna put it up at the top. And this is just a regular laundry drying rack here. And I actually only use this when I'm doing my fabric dyeing, so. That doesn't look like it was very evenly distributed there. I think I'm going to throw that one back in. Looks a little splotchy to me. The part got missed. So I'm going to put that back in there. And then I do, I wash everything. So it's going to get washed again and dried. So before you sew it into something, you want to make sure that you have, it's color fast, otherwise that could be a, a problem, especially if it's a gift for somebody. Okay, now I got myself into a situation here. Let's see. All right. This is a really good project to do in the middle of the summer when it's hot and you can get the most out of that and use the sun to help you out with the, the drying process. And this okay, so as you can see, there's quite a bit of yellow that came out. And I'm going to actually still use this to dye again some more stuff. And that one looks like it's just going to be splotchy. That's how it's going to be. So that's how it's, it's all right. Overall, I'm pretty happy with, with how this came out. Usually I try to like rinse it out. And you can change your color out in between each one. This is, this is, but see how it's draining out pretty clear. When it's coming out clear, when you wring it out and it's pretty clear, then you know you've gotten most of the dye out. And I'm going to wash all this again. I just want to make sure when I throw it all in the wash that I don't have color contamination between. Because I don't do a million loads of laundry. Okay, this is the result of our dyeing experiment for the day here. And as you can see, with just some five packets of commercial dye from the local craft store, we got quite a broad spectrum here and pretty vibrant colors. The red and the pink have been through the wash already, and I'll be washing everything else uh, as the day goes on. But uh, before we lost our light, we wanted to show you the results here. The t-shirts are over here. These are the first to go in, and they picked up the color quite nicely. And these are not all totally 100%, but they're primarily um, cotton fabric here. And um, over here, we have a mix of bleached white and natural flower tech tea towel fabric and this took the dye really nicely as well and you know one of the things i want to tell you guys about i use this drying rack for for dyeing um, projects and i like to um i just kind of throw everything on here but one of the things you want to be aware of is if you are going to do this at home and you're using a bunch of colors like i did you really want to designate areas for your fabric to dry because i did get some kind of drip effect because it started raining and the stuff the fabric got wet and then dripped down and that was a little bit irritating I was able to wash most of it out but that's just something to think about you might want to designate a drying rack per color if you have the space in your house to do that uh, or you want to just use old-fashioned clothesline that works for me uh, that's actually preferred actually if you just put clothesline up and you can pin the things on pieces of fabric on you're all good to go um, so yeah so this was the result every time you do a dyeing project it's going to come out a little bit differently and that's one of the things I love about it is that you can't predict what's going to happen exactly. 
And for that reason, I like to hear about your dyeing projects. Um, I'd like to know what kinds of fa uh, what kinds of fabric you use and what products you use, what you know commercial dyes you like. Uh, I'm also going to be doing some uh, natural dyeing videos probably as the summer goes on. I like to harvest things that are from my garden or other places. I have a couple of secret places that I go to find my materials. So I won't tell you where I get the stuff, but uh, I'll show you what it does. And um, so I'll be doing some videos on that and I'd like to hear just what you guys are working on. And uh, so send me some photos and uh, comment below about what you're using. And if you're interested in figuring out how to turn the once boring white t-shirts that are now, are now dyed into loopers for weaving on the craft sanity loom or your other metal pot holder loom that you might have at home check the link below and we'll make sure you can find the tutorial that will show you how to do that so happy crafting folks <laughs>